How's that? Also, it was, a, it was a really good learner. You know, when you listened, and, you know, yeah, needless to say, he was a freak on top of everything. The guy was so freaking strong. Uh, forget about blood pressure being 185 over 160 or something. <laughs> like, whoa, you know, never even heard of those numbers. He would eat. Uh, he had a Ziploc bag with Snickers and M&M's. And while he's waiting to go to the fight, like literally, he's, they're announcing him. He's eating the chocolate. And Man. I go, dude, yeah, I don't need to tell you that you shouldn't do that. You know, I, I get a rush out of it. Coleman ever met in a fight, cried. Who do you think would have won? Yeah. Um, that, it depends. Um, I got to say it like this. If we see the Mark Coleman that uh, showed up in 2000, training with Pat Miletic and, and, and became a rejuvenated, that was a very dangerous Mark Coleman. That's when uh, Pat really put the screws on him, and I think that was a very smart thing from, uh, from Coleman to do, to go to Pat Militich because he put the ringer on him, he trained him really hard, he was in great shape. And that's why he won the whole freaking tournament. But, you know, in the beginning, man, you know, I mean, when, 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 when uh, Kerr just came to Pride, I mean, he was just a phenom also. I don't know, stamina-wise, I would say that's why, I, normally I would have said Kerr because stamina was this one big thing with me. I put Kerr on the, on the scale. And I said, let's say you're 230 pounds. If you get 231, I stop training you. And he goes, why? I said, because you cannot gain weight with my training. We don't do weights. We don't do anything. You can only lose weight. So if you gain weight, that's not, I'm knowing you're using something and then this whole thing is going to be over. You know, so, and he always stayed under that weight. He was always sweating a lot, which always thought it was real. But then I found out later that was the freaking new pain that he was doing. <laughs> you know, no, I, I told him because he, he shot me up one time. It was like, I was at the end of my life. I had the tendonitis already started, right? So that stopped my career. And it's, it's not tendonitis. It's called something else. It's in your tendons. It's inside your arm and both sides. And if I, for instance, hit the back really hard, I feel like, like tick, I feel just that. And once I feel that, I go, oh, dude, I'm screwed. In 45 minutes, I, you can put the clock on it. I'm being paid for like two, two and a half hours. Insane pain. And there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can take. And especially if you're fighting, there's nothing you can take. And I was training Mark Kerr and Marco Huas in Japan. And suddenly I go like, we got to go to the hospital. I'm, I'm tears out of my ass from the pain. I'm still, I'm, I'm, I, I got to do something. And Mark says, let's all pack our stuff. He says, don't worry, I got something for you. And I, at this moment, I didn't care about anything anymore. And I remember walking in this room and he loads up a syringe and me not even going like that. Ah, I go, whatever, because I just was not to handle it. <laughs> and I remember him putting a needle in me and he looks at me and he says, within five seconds, your pain is gone. And he shoots it and it goes, and that's, I start sweating. And that's when I said, oh, now I know why you're sweating the whole time. You know, my, my evening was ruined. We had to go to a restaurant. I, I couldn't eat. I was so sick because the stuff so messed me up. But guess what? My pain was gone. And I remember asking myself, how can you fight on this? I mean, I was like a freaking plant. He says, now you get used to that. And then uh, you simply can't do it. It's really weird. Yeah. So, but that's how I found out why he was always, why he was always sweating. Because once I started sweating, I realized, oh, now I know why you're sweating.